Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, we're going to continue with our first person shooter by making the bolt objects that we created last time actually damage players. All right, so to make our bullet objects actually damage other players in the game, what we're going to do is write a damage script and we're going to store that in the server storage. And then whenever we create a bullet object, we're going to attach that script to it. So for now, you can just make a blank script and store it in the server storage and make sure you rename it to damage. After that, we're going to write a few more lines under our bullet create script, which we started in the server script service. So right in between these two chunks of code, what we're going to do is make a copy of the damage script, and then we're going to parent it to the bullet. So we're going to say local damage script is going to be equal to server storage. And we haven't actually defined what that is yet, so let's go ahead and do that up here. So up here we'll say local server storage. This is going to be equal to game colon get service. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put server storage. So now we can continue down here. So in the server storage, we're going to say find first child. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put the name of the script, which is damage. After that, we're going to say colon and clone. So this will make a copy of that script. And then we need to give it to the bullet by saying damage script dot parent. And then we're going to be attaching this to the bullet. All right, so let's go ahead and test to make sure this is working. So whenever we create the bullet, we want to see that the script gets attached to it. So once you shoot that bullet, it's going to show up in the workspace. And we can see under that bullet, it has our damage script. So we know that part of it's working. So what we're going to work on next is actually the script that's going to go inside of that. Okay, so now we're going to start working under this damage script. So just to remind you, this is under the server storage in a script called damage. We're going to start off by creating a reference for the bullet. So since this script is going to be inside the bullet, we can define it by saying local bullet. And it's going to be equal to script dot parent. After that, we're going to create a touch event function so that whenever it touches another object, we're going to check to see if it's a humanoid. And if we do find a humanoid, then we're going to damage it. So we'll do that by saying local function. The name of this function can be something like player check. Inside the parentheses, we're going to pass other part, which is the other object the bullet comes in contact with. Inside the function, we're going to define a variable called humanoid by saying local humanoid. And this is going to be equal to other part dot parent colon find first child. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put humanoid. And then to check to see if a humanoid object was hit, we're going to say if humanoid, then, and then to damage the humanoid player, we're going to say humanoid, colon, take damage. And then inside the parentheses will be the amount of damage we want to deal. So I'm going to set it at 30 to begin with, and then we can adjust this later on if we need to. Finally, outside this function, we're going to define the touch event and connect it to this function. So we'll say bullet dot touched colon connect and then we'll connect it to the function by saying player underscore check. There we go. So let's go ahead and try it out and see if it's working. Okay, so now I'm going to shoot the NPC which has a humanoid part and we can take a look and see what happens. And as you can see it damaged the humanoid object but it also dealt me some damage. So what we need to do is come up with a way of making sure that the bullet doesn't actually damage the player shooting the weapon. The way that we're going to do that is by adding another section to the bullet create script. So remember this is the script that we started in the server script service. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be attaching a string value to each bullet that has the information of who shot the bullet. So right down here we're going to start that off by saying local attacker is going to be equal to instance dot new. We're going to be creating a string value to store the name of the player. Then we'll say attacker dot name. So this is not the name of the player. This is just the name of the string value. And we'll set that to be attacker with a capital A. Then we'll say attacker dot parent. So this is where it's going to be located. And we're going to store that in the bullet. And then finally we'll say attacker 
dot value and we're going to set the value equal to player dot name okay so let's go ahead and run the code and we'll check it out so now if we shoot that bullet we can see we have the script and the attacker tag the way we're going to use this in our damage script which we have in the server storage is by adding another condition to this if statement and what we're going to say is we're going to say and so we're going to be looking for two things to happen that the object is a humanoid and that humanoid is not equal to the attacker so the way we're going to write that is by saying humanoid dot parent dot name so this will get the name of the player and we want to make sure that's not equal so we're going to use this symbol which in most keyboards is in the top left hand corner and then the equal sign and we want to make sure that's not equal to bullet dot attacker dot value oh and let me just make sure I spell bullet correctly okay so what we're doing here is we're making sure the object has a humanoid part and the name of the object that we're hitting is not equal to the player's name who is shooting the bullet so when I played the game it ran into an issue so it was a simple mistake I just misspelled attacker so let's go ahead and add that extra T and we can try it again so now if I shoot this NPC the NPC takes damage but I don't if you want to you can change the damage value so if you want it to be one shot one kill then you would just change this part to 100 so now if I shoot the NPC it only takes one shot to kill it alright so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up the video here in the next one, we're going to take a look at the leaderboard system and see how we can keep track of kills and also deaths. I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for the next one.